Okay, so let's talk about uh, one, of our, uh, one of our final uh, topics for this uh, week, which will be uh, talking about processes. Okay, so processes are similar to applications, um, but uh, well, actually, let me start by introducing you to another tool that you might like. Um, this is not something that you can use on Matrix, uh, from what I know, from what I gather. Um, you have to install it uh, separately. So if you've got maybe uh, the uh, Linux subsystem for Windows, or you're running Windows at home, or you're running on Mac, you can probably just uh, install this quite easily. What it does is it basically gives you just a slightly nicer view to look at stuff and I can use this to start exploring processes. What this is showing me is up here CPU usage, memory usage, uptime, load, all that kind of stuff. Um, but down here in this list what we have are a number of different processes. Each of these processes will have a unique process ID number at the very end here, 17646. Okay? And we've got a user and you know the amount of CPU percent and stuff like that that we're using, the amount of memory that we're using and stuff like that. So let's say I was gonna use this and I was gonna search for Firefox. Gonna do that. And you can see that I've got a bunch of Firefox processes here. Um, and if I'm going to, perhaps I want to use uh, the tree, so I'm going to hit F5, and now I can see that um, there's probably a process up here. Oh, I've got a Thunderbird process that's running. Um, but let's say I've got user lib Firefox, and this process created a whole bunch of other processes, and a whole bunch of other processes and it basically takes up a huge amount of memory and everything like that. Modern browsers will use tons of the memory and sort of like uh, free it up as it's being used but the idea being like we want to have like a nice uh, user experience so we just uh, any any unused RAM is just considered to be up for grabs and something that we can use. So it shouldn't be too concerning that we've got like a ton of Firefox memory being used. Um, but as you can see, each of these, like I have 19709, 19710, 712, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33. Right, so we're creating a whole bunch of different processes. Um, more sophisticated, more complex programs will have hundreds and hundreds of processes open running in the background basically. So that's all well and good. That is what processes look like. Okay, so after we talked a little bit about processes, um, let's go on to matrix. And I'm going to show you another way of looking at processes and working with processes that and this one will be um, Maybe not quite as colorful to work with, uh, but um, just as good. Um, so I'll just take a look. Let's see. HTOP, is it installed? No, it's not installed on Matrix, guys. Sorry. But we don't have to be using HTOP. We can just use TOP. You get the same stuff here. Um, it might be a little bit harder to work with. You might have to press question mark and you know read the commands to actually do this stuff. I don't know, whatever at home. I don't really want to have to read that um, but you can see we've got the same stuff going on here we've got a lot of things that are running as root and we've got a bunch of other stuff running which is kind of interesting right so instead of using top uh, let's use another program uh, let's use PS okay um, this will be fair game for quizzes and stuff so please pay attention let's run PS what do we get very very little. I've got two processes. I've got bash and I've got ps itself. So it's reading itself basically. And we see a process ID of 2148888 and 2159.77. Okay. But what about all those other things that we saw running when we look at top, right? We have a whole bunch of other things going on. Um, so to see that stuff, uh, we're going to have to add some flags to our ps command. Let's take a look at the man page. 
So PS is report a snapshot of the current processes. Um, there's a bunch of different uh, commands that we might use. Uh, probably what we're going to be using is PSEF, okay? Aha. Uh -huh. So now I'm beginning to see a whole bunch of other people's processes and things. I'm not just seeing this user's processes, I'm seeing everybody's processes. So you can see here I am right now. I've got the same two processes as I had before, right? Basically running my bash session and whatever else. Um, but I'm also seeing for this user over here who is running a lot of tail dash f cars. Okay, that's whatever. All right. Uh, this guy is doing assignment number two. Very good. Um, what else we got over here? Uh, this one's just doing a bash, doing an online script. You know, anyway, you get the basic idea, right? So with ps-ef, what I might do is combine this with a program called grep. Okay. We're going to talk more about grep if we, if you haven't been introduced to to it at all up until this point. Don't worry, we're going to talk more about it, obviously. Um, but basically what it does is it's going to do a find for a certain pattern. So you can see the output that I get from this command is taking that whole list of processes, like hundreds and hundreds of processes running, and I'm going to search for the ones that only have the keyword SSHD. And I can see all the people who are on, online right now uh, using SSH to log in. So basically what I can see is all the uh, remote users on this certain session. Okay. Another thing that we can do with the PS is we can add the flag U and we will just see a certain users processes so it's another easy way of filtering stuff I can take a look at this user and just uh, see what's going on so why is it useful to know about processes well usually it might be because um, you need to kill something there's a process that is uh, misbehaving it's hung it's not responding um, you're debugging a program and you're trying to figure out uh, that there's Maybe you see like there's a huge memory leak going on or something like that and you just want to kill the thing and, you know, release the memory. Um, so in this case, we would probably want to be using something called kill. So just as an example, maybe what I'll do over here is I'll open up top. So I've got top open, top is running. Um, it's running normally, everything is fine. Uh, but let's, let's pretend that our top has somehow stopped responding. And what I might do is try to open up another shell window and I, I might to, I might grab for top and I'll see what's there. So some of the output that you get from your PS is going to be the process that you just run, which is grepping for top. So that's showing up as the last line here. Let me make it smaller maybe, so it's a bit easier to read. Um, I've got something here called desktop portal. I'm not worried about that. This is the one that I'm seeing, right? Um, this is Eric. That's the process of 24883, whatever, and the name top. If I run this again, you're going to see, yeah, it's still there. Still running. Um, so let's, like I said, we're assuming that maybe our top has stopped responding. It's not working. Um, so one thing I might want to do is to kill it. So let me type in that process ID. And you'll notice as soon as I ran that, I come over here and I'm back to the shell because my top has exited. It has quit. So that gives you an idea. Or let's say um, I don't have to use a process ID. I can just go ahead and uh, type in the name of a program. Um, if I want to do that, I'm going to use pkill instead of just kill. And I might do this. Same process, same idea as before, right? Um, we're basically taking something and uh, ending it. 
Um, let's use a different example. I'm going to use PSEF instead of looking for top. I'm going to look for Tilex. Now, what is Tilex? Tilex is my fancy terminal, my terminal program. Um, I'm using this because I can create split screens and stuff like that. So I kind of, I kind of enjoy it. It's kind of useful. But let's say that my terminal is not working and I need to kill it. It's gone. I'll have to start it up all over again. So this is an example of using processes. Um, it can be a bit dangerous. Now, uh, some words about this. Let me take a look. Let me show you in HTOP, for example. So this is HTOP. Let me go in. Let me search for Tilex again, maybe. And you can see that uh, this is uh, running as a child of Plasma Shell. I'm not really going to get into it, but you know, whatever. Um, and you can see that at the bottom I've got some different options here. One of the options is to do kill again. And when I'm doing this in HTOP, it gives me a bunch of different options. The one that is the default is 15, and that is SIG term. Term is short for terminate in this point. So what this is going to do is um, try and send a signal to the program to basically quit. It's almost like the same as uh, hitting control C on something when you don't know what it's doing or if it's taking too long and you just want to get out of it, right? So terminate is absolutely um, quite safe, should always be okay. You know, you'll lose your work if you're trying to terminate like a notepad.exe kind of program or something like that. Um, sometimes it doesn't always work. Like if you have something that's really, really misbehaving, um, terminate will not happen. In that case, you get up to number nine, which is called SIG kill. And kill can cause a lot of instability to your system uh, because memory is not being freed up. Um, you're basically taking a very, very um, drastic measure to try and stop this thing. Um, so it is not at all recommended. But once again, I can do that. And I think I just killed the process of uh, Tilex, not the actual parent process or something like that. Um, so if you were going to do something like that, you would use dash nine. Uh, I'm not gonna use Tilex. Well, I, it would be Tilex, but then P kill, I think. Um, so that would kill Tilex. And I don't think I really wanna do that because I don't really wanna mess with fire. But anyway, it can be done it is totally possible to do it. Okay, so the last thing we're going to talk about is um, doing different things with processes, uh, for example, moving them to background and having them run as background processes. Uh, so what does that mean? Well, you sometimes have uh, jobs that are going to take a very long time and uh, you want them running, but you don't necessarily want to be babysitting them, sitting around waiting for some feedback to come up on the screen. You want to, you know, get on with your day and maybe be doing some other stuff in the terminal. There's a couple of different things you can do. I suppose you could have like two different terminal windows open or whatever, um, but maybe you just want it running as a background process. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, <clears throat> First of all, I'm going to show you this program, this uh, command that I've typed in here. The only thing that you need to know about what this is doing is that it's going to take a really long time and it's going to build a file called foo.log and another one called error.log and these files are going to be quite big. That's basically it. If you want to know more about what this is actually doing, um, I encourage you to read up uh, one of our future weeks and lectures will be about grep and using regular expressions and stuff like that, go ahead, feel free to read up and see what the uh, dash R is doing. Okay. So I'm gonna let this go, and this is running. Um, it is running. We can see that because we can take a look at foo.log, and we can see this is 2.7 megs. Let's take a look at it again. We're jumping up to 11 megs, okay. Um, so we have a process that's running, but right now we can't do anything because we would have to wait for this to get done. Um, if we don't want to do that, we can have this run in the background, which is totally fine. 
The way to do that is we're going to use Control Z, Control Z, or whatever you like. Um, when I hit this, you're going to get a little bit of information back. Um, it's giving this a number. The number is one. It's saying that it's stopped. So right now, you can see we're stuck at 11 megs. This is not running. Uh, we would say basically when you're hitting Control Z, you are suspending a process. It means it's paused, nothing is happening. If I want to keep it going, um, I can use BG. And what that's going to do is basically have this running in the background. And take a look at this again. We should see that it starts growing again. Might take a little while. We'll see. Let's take a look at what error.log is doing. Okay, so we're up to 17. And if you really want to be sure, what we can do is use PSEF. Wrap. Wrap. And you can see that it is actually running. Um, been running for about 20 seconds. And you know, now I can do other things and it doesn't matter. Um, if you want to take a look at those background jobs, you can just hit jobs. You can see that there's one running. And uh, we can actually bring that back up to the foreground if we want. We can use FG, one. And now we're sitting there. Now we're watching it run again. It's not really doing anything, but that's okay. So we'll let that go. And we can even start running yet another one. Hit Control Z, BG. Now when I look at jobs, I can see that I've got two of them running. And uh, they're probably spit into the same place. So yeah, we're up to 76. 76, it's probably gonna get bigger at some point. Um, so yeah, that's basically that. And if you really want to watch foo.log, what you can use use you can use uh, tail dash f, and we can just watch this uh, start to grow as it goes. Um, so that's jobs. Um, it can be pretty useful for some things. Um, the other thing that you can do if you ever want to just like have a process running in the background without uh, worrying about hitting Control Z and all that stuff, the only thing that you have to do is whatever you've typed in, just add the ampersand to the end of that command. Okay? So for example, we can take a look at what's going to happen with ping. Most likely what this is going to do is keep spitting stuff into our terminal because it's supposed to redirect, but maybe I can actually just turn that off. I'll throw that into ping.txt maybe. So now I've got a ping.txt thing running and we can take a look at that if we really need to. And if we look at our jobs, we've got three jobs running. We've got a ping, we've got some greps, and um, that can be useful in some ways. You can see that our grep stuff is still running because it just updated over here. And um, now we don't want to keep doing this, so what I'll probably do is um, go, I'm going to bring uh, number one to my foreground. I'm going to hit Control C just to just to kill it, to terminate it, because I'm not I'm not really interested in it. And of course, the other way that we can do it is uh, with using p kill rep. So I can do that. Now you can see that I've got a message here that this has been terminated. That's all well and good. Um, if I really want to, what I can do is ps-ef, and I'm going to search for ping. I can see the process is 20. 6202. I'm going to kill that. Now, if I look at jobs, I've got no jobs running. So, I hope that's useful.